A final report, third-party investigation from Saddleback Church has now cleared incoming new pastor Andy Wood to go ahead and take the reins from Rick Warren to lead Saddleback into the future. However, that is not what some former victims are saying. In fact, they are calling the investigation completely and totally false. What is going on? We're going to talk about several pastors, formerly of Echo Church, Andy Wood's church that he came from, and, well, who really is Andy Wood? We'll talk about it all here in less than 10 seconds. First, guys, if you could, if YT lets you, try and hit that like button for me. Also, very important, you please share this video, hit the bell, subscribe, and wear the glasses because I'm blind. So, Vander Bloman, they are a Christian uh, organization that does these third-party investigations. Although, according to one Vander Bloman former employees, so they are more of a, you know, search inquiry type of a group that does more social media combing when these new pastors get appointed and they start the, you know, the background checks and all of that. Uh, but they are in no way some sort of a third-party investigation that really, you know, digs deep into these, you know, questions, especially when it comes to abuse allegations. Now, when Saddleback Church had first made the announcement that Andy Wood would be taking over for Rick Warren, you know, there had apparently already been a background check that was in the process here by Vander Bloman for Andy Wood. And a preliminary report that was released not long after that, about a week or two later, showed that there was no signs of abuse patterns whatsoever with Andy. Now, again, this was a preliminary report. However, once that preliminary report was released, well, all of a sudden we start getting all these social media posts from former members of Echo Church, volunteers, even staff that had said, wait a minute, there was in fact abuse that took place here at Echo, especially spiritual abuse when it came to Andy. And so the investigation continued on from there. And now the elders of Saddleback have put out what they say is the final report that once again has cleared Andy Wood of any wrongdoing. In fact, they said there is no trace. There is no reason to believe that any abuse occurred whatsoever in the case of Andy. Although they don't in any way define abuse, you know, or the sort of uh, leadership style. Uh, and this is important because um, as former pastors here, Jason and Lori Adams Brown, who did not sign NDAs, unlike many others who used to attend Echo, were forced to sign NDAs. I hate NDAs. I've talked about this all of the time. They do whatever they can to keep the mouths of these former members shut. But for Jason and Lori Adams Brown, they did not sign an NDA. In fact, Lori Adams Brown had come out with a statement that said that Andy Wood is a wolf behind the curtain who is in fact looking to devour the sheep. Even though Vander Bloman claims that they interviewed many people formerly of Echo Church who served that were volunteers or were other members, Jason and Lori Adams Brown claim that they know at least 15 to 20 people that served in some capacity of the church that were not even contacted, that expressed their deep concerns for Andy. Many of them, by the way, pastors who were, again, forced to not say anything that were, you know, tied up because of NDAs that say this is very dangerous for Andy to take the helm here at Saddleback Church. And, well, Lori Adams Brown has been one of the most vocal about this because of the fact that she didn't have to sign any NDA. What is the type of culture? Well, many that have chimed in have said that this is a case where Andy, anything goes. Whatever he says goes. You don't listen to him? Well, he will make you pay for it. In fact, it was Jason Adams Brown that said that it was his own wife, Lori Adams Brown, who had disagreed with Andy Wood on a number of different things, just simply questioned him, and that led to her and him being fired in their position as 
associate pastors there at the church because they didn't want to go along the narrative of what Andy wanted. They described the behavior actually very similar to that of none other than Mr. Mark Driscoll, an Arizona pastor who has a rich history in verbal spiritual abuse. In fact, he was at Echo Church in 2021 for a leadership conference where he was right there alongside of Andy Wood to go ahead and conduct it. Is it a case here of birds of a feather flock together? Well, it sure looks like to be the case. Now, even with all of these claims coming out, Lori Adams Brown making you know the claims here about Andy, Saddleback went ahead and contacted another third party investigation to go over what Vanderbloman had to do. A company by the name of Middlebrook. And while they combed through the investigation done by Vanderbloman and they too said that they found nothing wrong at all with the report that was put out here by Vanderbloman. They said, no, nope, everything looks good here. No signs, no patterns of abuse. By the way, that report will not be made public. Why is that? Why won't it be made public? I mean, even Hillsong, after a while, had finally started to make some of these investigations public after it was demanded that they do so. What are they trying to hide? They they're trying to protect the people that came out here and put these statements out. Look, this is important. If you got someone that's getting ready to take the reins here of a huge mega church like Saddleback, well, I think the report should be made public. However, when it comes to Middlebrook, they have a history of faulty investigations themselves. The date even back to 2019 where they, well, had investigated a church where misdeeds of children were going on and, well, they ruled against the church and found that there were, in fact, none of those deeds going on despite massive amounts of evidence. So is it a case here where you have these so-called Christian organizations that are basically like this with the mega churches? Where they're not gonna, you know, bother in any way to, you know, throw a pastor out there if they in do fact find abuse patterns. What is in fact a healthy leader? Because that was another question that came up here, and and Lori Adams Brown even addressed this. Do they look at someone like a Mark Driscoll? All the patterns of spiritual abuse that this guy has had, the countless calls for him to resign, and do they look at that as some sort of a healthy leader? Because huh, if so, uh Saddleback's going to have some problems. Rick Warren, he's a whole nother story altogether. You know, they reached out to Andy Wood for comment, for interview about the investigation, but he's taking off the entire month of July to prepare to take the helm from Rick Warren in September. Hmm. And then they'll celebrate Rick Warren as 43 years in ministry before Andy takes the reins officially. I believe it's around September 11th or 12th somewhere around that time but a lot was uncovered here and i'm going to put a link down below in the description if you guys want to check out some more of the details here about what some of the former members are saying here about the leadership of andy wood and how toxic it truly is and that you know the elders many of them did not even reach out to any of the victims that were under andy that suffered under his abusive leadership style you know it's truly sad we're going to find out once he takes over where Saddleback goes. Is it a case where you got one bad leader in Rick Warren stepping aside and just making room for another one? A lot of times, too, it's kind of like politics. You know, I look at New York Governor Andrew Cuomo. You know, when he stepped down because of all of the accusations against him, because of all the nasty stuff he did with the women, well, people were happy that he was gone. But who was he replaced with? Kathy Hochul who has actually proved to be even worse than Andrew Cuomo was. So oftentimes, you always have somebody that's even dirtier that are waiting in the wings to take over. Look, the deep, the deep state church is real, ladies and gentlemen. And well, as part of being in Silicon Valley there with Echo Church, the style of the leadership, well, it all kind of makes sense. But again, I'll post more for you down below in the description. You can offer your thoughts. I'm sure there'll be a wide array of different thoughts and opinions when it comes to this. Also, if you guys enjoy my daily content here talking about end time Bible prophecy headlines, 
you want to help support my ministry with a generous donation, click the link to my PayPal down below or sign up on my Patreon for just five bucks a month. When you do, you'll be alerted for all the content I put out. Don't rely on YT for notifications. They'll barely send them out to you anymore. They censor me all the time. Plus, you can leave your comments there completely censorship-free and send direct messages. Again, all those links are down below. A big, big thank you to everybody already contributing and those thinking of doing so. Thank you as well. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. Now, I'm not done just yet because I don't leave any video here without giving people the opportunity to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. If that's you, if you're watching right now, you're someone that has not yet received Christ into their life, I want to lead you in a prayer right now to get you to do just that. This is a prayer that you can do in your own words, but I will give you the steps that you need to bring it before the Lord today. The first thing that you want to do right off the top, acknowledge that you're a sinner. It's something that we all are, but the good news is this. God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world. He died and rose again for you and me. He paid that cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin. And repent means to turn from your sin. Not just to say you're sorry, but to turn from those things that are not of the Lord. Lifestyles, habits, all of that. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and you ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away. And the Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then... You invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. I pray you make that decision today. I'll have more on this for you down below. You can let me know your thoughts. Don't forget the links to donate to our ministry are there as well. It is a great blessing if you could help us out. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.